All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Wahara Kakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the hopeful, hopeful elect out here tolling in this truth. I'm Bathaka Moth, GMS Dallas, and I'm just uh, coming back at you with a really quick hit lesson. Uh, I think I'm going to entitle this one E is the modern day Pharaohs, and America is modern day Egypt. And of course, uh, uh, you will have the same fate that the ancient Pharaoh and ancient Egypt uh, uh, had, man. You know what I'm saying? No new thing under the sun. The, the, the Lord is dealing uh, uh, with you in these times as he dealt with, with, with Pharaoh and Egypt in that time, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and you have to be a, a, a man of, of, of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and, and spiritual discernment to... Uh, you know, you have to be given that from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to be able to see these things in these times, man. You know, because the majority of our people, they can't see these things, man. You know, and the churches have them blind, man. You know, blind to the fact of these things, man. You know what I'm saying? Which at the end of the day, it's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai not giving, into, uh, giving it to them because it's not given to everyone to know the mysteries and secrets. You know, and the scriptures go into that. But uh, you ease, which are the Edomites, you, you go back to your uh, forefather Esau. You know, you self-proclaimed so-called white people are the modern-day uh, uh, pharaohs, man. You're the modern-day Egyptians. And and, and America is, is uh, modern-day Egypt. So, without any further ado, I want to get an account real quick in Exodus, the seventh, uh, uh, the seventh chapter, going into how the, the Most High dealt with, uh, uh, with Pharaoh because he's dealing with... Uh, with you Edomites basically the same way, man. You know, this is Exodus 7 and 2. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh that he send the children of Israel out of his land. You know what I'm saying? So the Most High was all about letting my people go. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and, and my wonders in the land of Egypt. So I want to go real quick into this, into this word harden, you know, because he hardened the Pharaoh's heart. Uh, and it's uh, 87185, uh, Kashach, Kashach. And uh, I want to get right to the point uh, in the biblical usage. Uh, number three down here, to make hard, make stiff, make stubborn. A, of obstinacy. Uh, four, to show stubbornness. So it's all about that stubbornness, man, you know, making him stiff, just like the he, he refers to the uh, the Israelites as being stiff necked, hard headed and stiff necked to make stubborn. But I'll, I'll go into this word real quick. We'll do a web search real quick. This obstinacy. And uh, it's obstinacy, obstinacy, the quality or condition of being obstinate, stubbornness, uh, similar stubbornness, inflexibility. And we can get some more. Uh intractability intract intractableness pig-headedness bull-headedness uh self will strong-minded you know uh stiffness you know you get the picture just uh hard-headed basically you know what i'm saying he did he, he 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 hardened his heart to make him go against him so this is what the lord did to to, to pharaoh man you know he made him stiff-necked stubborn and hard-headed towards uh, uh releasing his people man you know, and, if, and when you know the account, Pharaoh was trying to release the people, man. He wanted to let them go. But as, as we just read, the, the, the Most High hardened his heart, man, you know, and made him say no. You know what I'm saying? No. When he uh, originally wanted to say yes, man, which proved that the Lord controls all things. And why did the Lord do that? Well, he's going he's gonna to tell you. Verse 4, Exodus 7 and 4. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you. That I may lay my hand upon is uh, Salakia upon Egypt, so the Lord wanted to lay His hand upon Egypt, man, and bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. So the Lord wanted to to lay His hand upon Egypt and lay great jug and bring great judgments to the to uh, Pharaoh and and those Egyptians, man. You know, verse five, and the Egyptians shall know that I am. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, when I stretch forth mine hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from, from among them. So the Most High uh, uh, hardened Pharaoh's heart and made him uh, 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 go against him and be stubborn and hard-headed that he, that he could uh, uh, lay his hand upon Egypt. 
you know, with those plagues, you know what I'm saying? And jack uh, uh, those Egyptians up, man, that he could show his power, man, you know, when he delivered his people from him. And the same things are happening in, in, uh, in this time, man, you know, the Lord is pleading again in these times for his people. And his people are the Israelites, which the Israelites uh, uh, are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians of Negroid descent, man. You know, you are the, uh, uh, the true biblical Israelites. And he's pleading for you in these times, beginning starting with the elect, to the modern-day pharaohs, you know, the modern-day Egyptians, these E's, these Edomites, man, the so-called self-proclaimed white people, to let his people go, you know. And when you go into the book of, uh, of Joel, the third chapter... This is Joel chapter 3 and verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Yahweh Shapat, which is the, uh, in the Hebrew, Yahweh Shapat is uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Yahweh's decision, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and part in my land. So the, uh, uh, the, the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is, is gathering these nations over in, in, the, in the land over there near, uh, around the Euphrates, you know, in the valley of decision, man, Yahweh's decision, Yahweh Shapat, as we speak, so that he may judge these people, man. You know what I'm saying? He's going to bring the judgment down for uh, 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 the scattering of his people among all these nations. That's exactly why he's gathering all these nations over there to bring that judgment down on all these nations, because his people is among all these nations, man. <clears throat> and he's and that's that pleading. Jo uh, Joel 3 and 12, I want to drop down to verse 12. Let the heathen be wakened. And come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. So, hey, we're in a time of the of that judgment, man. You know what I'm saying? And how does the Lord judge, man? You know, He tells you. Let's get it. This is Isaiah chapter 16, uh, Salakia, uh, uh, chapter 66, and verse 15, and it reads: For behold, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flame, flames of fire. Verse 16. For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. So this is how the Lord pleads. You know it says he's going to plead with all flesh. By fire and by his sword. Because those chariots. Which are the so called uh, uh, UFOs. Which they're actually chariots. Uh, uh, the chariots of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. The chariots of Israel man. You know they're not UFOs. They're IFOs, very identifiable, man. We know exactly what they are, you know, and those, uh, uh, the chariots are going to bring a, a fire. And it says in verse 16, for by fire and by his sword, will the Lord plead with all flesh. And what's that sword, man? The sword is the ICBM nuclear missiles, man, you know. So between the nuclear missiles and the chariots, much fire will be bought to this place, man. You know what I'm saying? And it says... And that's how the Lord is going to plead with all flesh. That's how he's going to plead in these times. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. So many people are going to be put to death, man. You know what I'm saying? When the Lord uh, really starts to, uh, uh, to plead for, for his people, man. You know? And, uh, you know, just as, uh, as it was then, during the time of Pharaoh and the Egyptians back then in the ancient land of, uh, of Egypt, uh, uh, it's, it's the same now, today, man. You know what I'm saying? He he plagued uh, uh, Pharaoh back then, and he's he's been plaguing you devils today, man. You know what I'm saying? And the scriptures go into that, you know. Which we'll get it really quick. Uh, this is Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 11, and it reads, "But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, and smite Egypt." with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof you know what i'm saying so he said he's going to plague e uh, 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 egypt as before man you know so you know the same things has has been happening uh uh in these times that it happened back then man the the, the bloody water you know the water being turned to blood you know what i'm saying the uh the uh, uh, uh the plague of the of the cattle you know all of these different things, the, the locust swarms, all of these things have been happening in these times, man. You know, you know, and, and uh, he said, and will destroy all the land thereof, man. So that destruction is, is, is by way of the chariots 
and those nuclear missiles, man. You know what I'm saying? In these times, you know, because America is modern day Egypt, spiritually, of course. And 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 and, and let's really quick, let's get that. Let, let me let me prove that real quick. This is Revelations chapter 11 and verse 8, and it reads, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So it says, And their dead bodies shall lie uh, in the street of the great city, which their dead bodies is talking about uh, uh, spiritually dead. You know, now, of course, because they don't have any understanding uh, uh, pursuing the uh, Proverbs uh, 21 and 16. The man that wandereth out of, way of, out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. And two-thirds two -third of our people of Israel don't have the understanding, man. So they're, you know, they're trapped up in all kind of madness from, from Christianity uh, uh, to, to Buddhism to Egyptology to Islam, man, and, and, and everything in between, man. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, hey, no understanding. So there are those dead bodies. That's why the Most High says in Zechariah 13 and 8, uh, 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 two parts shall be cut off and die He's going to have to destroy the majority of his nation because of it So that's the dead bodies It's talking about spiritually Now we, we do know that uh, eventually That's that's going to become physically dead You know uh, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street Of the great city And that great city Is, is, is America man It says which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt man You know And of course we know uh, 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 they, they passed gay laws here and, 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 you know, to protect uh, uh, sodomites and transgenders and, you know, so this is the place of protection for that, for those uh, 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 abominations, man. You know what I'm saying? So this is spiritual Sodom. And, and, and when you look on the back of your dollar bill, you'll, you'll see a, a Egyptian pyramid, you know, with that all CNI on it. And then when you look up the, in the in the yard of the uh, of the uh, National Monument, you'll see a, a Cleopatra's needle, man. Or, or, or an Egyptian obelisk, which they received that as, as a gift directly from Egypt. So that's not a that's not a, 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 a fake, man. That's a real, that's real, man. You know what I'm saying? And it was a gift from, actually from Egypt, man, from the land of Egypt. You know? So it says, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. You know? And how was the Lord crucified here? You know, they changed the image and put up a, a so-called self-proclaimed white man, you know, which goes back to Ch uh, Cesare Borgia and, and further back to Serapis Christus. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, changed his countenance, his 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 the doctrine, everything, you know. So he was crucified a second time here in America, man. Which that that lines up and proves that 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 America is 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 what this scripture right here is talking about, man. You know. Which proves that you are the uh, 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 modern day uh, pharaohs and Egyptians and America is that modern day Egypt. It says spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. So it's not, it wasn't talking about the physical land, man. You know, and then it lines up also perfectly with Deuteronomy 28 and 68 when he said that he, he was going to send his people into Egypt again with ships. You know, and you don't we, we all know that you don't need a ship to go into the uh, physical land of Egypt over there from Israel, man. You know, what I'm saying we walked in the in, in the Egypt the first time, man, you know, so that meant that that was talking about something else, man. And we we came far from our borders uh, uh, pursuant to the scriptures, man, all the way from the uh, uh, from the east, all the way over here to the western hemisphere. And also we were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, man. You know what I'm saying? By way of cargo slave ships, man, you know, all the way over here to America, which has those pyramids on their on their currency and has that Egyptian obelisk in, in, in the yard of the of the uh, of the monument up there, the national monument, man, which proved this is that spiritual Egypt, man. You know what I'm saying? So you are the modern day Egyptians, pharaohs, and this is America's modern day uh, uh, Egypt, man. And let's just continue to prove that this is Romans, the ninth chapter. And I'm going to start at verse 13 and read down. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Verse 14, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? God forbid. So there's no unrighteousness with the Most High. The Most High can do what he wants. He doesn't do anything unrighteous, man. Every move he makes, everything he does is in righteousness, man. You know, and he can choose a, a, a nation of people to love and he can choose a nation of people to hate because he created both. He cre he's responsible for creation, man. You know, 
You can do what you want with what you created, man. And he's going to go into that. This is verse 15. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that showeth mercy. So the Most High is telling you that he can do what the hell he wants to do, man. And here's the point, man, because he, he likens you to uh, Pharaoh, man. You eat, you, you, uh, uh, you uh, Edomites, man. You know, that Esau, that, that vessel of dishonor. Verse 17, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, and what did he say to Pharaoh? Let my people go. He's saying that to you in, the, in, in today and these times. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. You know, what's that purpose? To show his power. He allowed you, just like he allowed uh, a Pharaoh, the ancient Pharaoh, he allowed you to take his people into captivity, you Edomites, you know, to take his people into captivity, you know. He's pleading with you to let them go. But what does the scripture say? They held them fast, man. You know, so you wouldn't you 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 refuse to let us go just like Pharaoh back then refused to let us go, man. You know what I'm saying? And he's pleading with you, you know, for his people, just like he pleaded back then. That I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. And that's exactly what's going to happen when he uh, 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 visit this visits this place and delivers his people and destroys you Edomites and, 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 and your your precious America, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it's exactly what's going to happen when Yahawashai returns, man. You know, he's coming to destroy America uh, uh, and, and simultaneously deliver uh, uh, the, the chosen people of Yahawashim Yahawashai, the elect, the one third, man. You know what I'm saying? And that that name is going to be that that power is, is and that fear is going to be attached to the name Yahweh why Yahawashai, man. You know what I'm saying? Which is going to bring that fear uh, uh, where his people are concerned, man. You know, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American and Seminole Indians, man, of Negro descent, who, are, who make up the 12 tribes, the biblical Israelites, man. Verse 18, therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. And he hardened Pharaoh back then, and he's hardening you devils today, man. He's got you very prideful. He's, he's allowed you to, to uh, get very built up, you know, and, and your pride is very high. You, 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 you're going to be so hardened to the, to the point that you're going to try to fight the Messiah when he returns, man. To no avail. You're going to get your ass whooped, man. Verse 19. Thou wilt say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault for, he, for who hath resisted his will? You know? And that's, that cuts free, free will right there, man. Nobody can resist the will of the Lord. He can, he's controlling all aspects of everything in the earth, man. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody doing their own thing, you know. Verse 20, nay, but O man, who art thou that replies against the Most High? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Which is what a person would do. But he's saying, who are you to do that, man? I created you. I created everything. I can do with you what I will, whatever I want to. <coughs> Salakia. Verse 21, hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Yes, he can, man. Why? Because he's the creator of it from that lump. Verse 22, what if the Most High willing to show his wrath and to make his power known and do it with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, which he has done that very thing. He's endured with much long suffering because this whole time he's given the if pursuing a Job 924, the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked, which you so-called uh, uh, self-proclaimed white people who are the biblical Edomites, man. You know, and you you you've had the, the earth put into your hands for a period of time, which goes into that in Revelations when he says that uh, 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 for a short uh, you were going to be let loose uh, for a short season, man. And that in that short season, you were going to you were going to come back into uh, rulership and rule, you know, which lines up with Job 924, you know, which goes back to Genesis, the 27th chapter and that carnal uh, uh, temporary. Uh, blessing that was given to you by our forefather Isaac, which in an incarnation we now know through the spirit was Yahawashai, man, you know, and he blessed you. So that blessing had to be fulfilled. You know what I'm saying? So it was all for, for the sake of prophecy and fulfillment of, of, of prophecy and that blessing, man, that you were given in Genesis 27. You know, you ain't did nothing special, man. Uh, what if the verse 22, what if the most high willing to show his wrath and to make his power known and do it with much long suffering? Because the fact that you've had the earth, it's been in total and pure wickedness and evil, man. You know, 
and a, and a, and a most high has been holding it man you know just to let you get through it man you, to get through it but he there's an there's an appointed time set and you're not going to go past that man and the lord can't wait to get to you man you know what i'm saying uh with much long suffering Endured with much long suffering vessels the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction So you're the vessels of wrath and you're fitted to destruction and you're gonna be destroyed man You know by way of those chariots and those nukes that we read about in Isaiah 66 and 15 man, you know But you are the modern-day Pharaohs and you and, and the, the modern-day Egyptians and, and America is modern-day Egypt man You know what I'm saying and just like there was a exodus out of the physical land of Egypt from the from the Pharaoh back then same thing in this time. They're going to be a second exodus and out of the, the spiritual Egypt, man. You know, and I'm going to get that real quick before I close. This is Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14. And it reads, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh Yahushai, that it shall no more be said, Yahweh Yahushai liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. So that's not going to be said any, 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 anymore. That's what we're talking about in these times. But something else is going to be talked about, which proves we're going to be right here on earth talking about things, man. Verse 15, but Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. And where is the land of the north, man? Right here, North America, man. We're in the land of the north, man. And that deliverance is going to, be, is going to come from the land of the north, right here, because the, the, the majority of the Israel... Israelites are right here in America, man. And of course, he's going to deliver from uh, the four corners of the earth, which in that uh, pursuing a, a Matthew, the 24th chapter in verse 31, he's going to gather his elect from the four winds of uh, uh, under heaven, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers, which that goes perfectly uh, uh, with, with Isaiah, the 14th chapter. And I'm going to read this real quick. Isaiah 14 and 1. For Yahweh Hashem Yahushai will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. You know, so he's going to teach uh, the, the Lord chooses a uh, uh, Jacob, man. You know, he's going to have uh, mercy on Jacob and he's choosing Israel, man. And he's going to set Israel in their own land. And he's going to set them in that land by way of that. Uh, what I just read. In uh, uh, Jeremiah 16, man, which I want to get the, there's another account in Jeremiah 23. I'm going to read that real quick and then I'll bring this to a, a close, man. This is Jeremiah 23 and 7. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, that they shall no more say, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. So he's going to lead the seed of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent out of the land of the north country, man. America, North America. And from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land, which I just read that in Isaiah, the 14th chapter. So, well, one more. Let's get one more real quick. Matthew 24 and 31 and bring it full circle. This is Matthew 24 and 31. And he shall send his angels with a great with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So that's that gathering, man, by way of that second exodus, which will be the so-called UFOs, man. You know, the chariots of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. You know what I'm saying? And you modern day Pharaohs, you modern day Egyptians. Uh, uh, are going to receive the same fate that uh, the ancient Pharaoh and Egyptians uh, uh, received, man. You know, and it is what it is. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful story. It's just beautiful to to uh, have that understanding. You know, so hey, with that, hopefully this was edifying to the hopeful elect. Giving all praises, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Wahawa Kakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect, the house of David, the Bayath Shal Dawadad. Shalom.